Everybody, one way or the other, is in need of a change. Change in situation, change in location. We all want a change for the better. But God did the most impossible. He changed you. When you became born again, when you became saved, He changed you. We were all into eternal condemnation. That's a change that is humanly impossible. Our faith has already been sealed by sin, but He rescued us by His love. And because He can change you, then be rest assured that He's changing the situations around your life. Amen. Do I hear an amen to that? Amen. If God could change that which was eternal, then get ready because that which is passing is about to change. Amen. And you know, the Bible says that as we behold Him, as we behold his image, we are changed from glory to glory. So every time you come into the presence of God, the change that has happened in your spirit begins to walk its way out. Begins to manifest itself in your mind, in your soul, and then to your life and your physical environment. How many of you believe that? That's why every time you come into the presence of God, you cannot go back the same. Not you will not, you cannot. It's not possible. The Bible says in His presence is the fullness of joy. And at His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. He says they go from strength to strength. Each one that appears before God. Where? In Zion. Where is Mount Zion? He says ye have come unto Mount Zion. The city of the living God. To an innumerable company of angels. To the church of the firstborn. The general assembly which you are and I am. In connection with the church in heavens even to the spirit of just men made perfect so Mount Zion is no longer in Jerusalem alone this is Mount Zion every time we gather by the Spirit of God we plug on and we fuse in to the heavenly congregation and whatever is possible there is possible here that's how I know that if you came in here broke you are living here blessed if you came in here sick, you are living here healed. It doesn't have to be a miracle service. It doesn't have to be a miracle service. Miracle service is just a name. It's just a service where your expectation can be prompt up to believe God for the impossible. However, the same presence that creates the miracles in a miracle service is here tonight. If you came in sick, you are going back healed. If you came with a burden, that burden is being lifted right now. If you came with any challenge standing before you as a mountain, it becomes a stepping stone yeah. into your next level. Shout a big amen. Yeah. Can you clap your hands, shout, and give the Lord a big hand of praise? Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of God in this place. Can I prophesy to us this evening before we begin? The Lord gave me a word this around midday. The Lord said I should declare to us, He's not only going to bring restoration to your life, 
but he's bringing recovery and restoration now i know you didn't understand what i said so let me explain again there is a difference between recovery and restoration listen catch the revelation recovery is when you lose material or physical possessions restoration is when you lose time are you hearing me when he says i will restore he didn't say i will restore your fortune he didn't say i will restore your car your job your house your whatever no because what satan steals the most from you is your time all right but recovery is when you lose material possessions without recovery restoration will just be you have lost it it's gone and then you wait again for god to bring another blessing to you but god said to tell you that even that which was lost you will recover all you know what he told david in first samuel 30 he said pursue overtake and recover all let me tell you something there are when, when the devil steals things from your life eh? they don't disappear they are hidden somewhere the bible calls him the thief every thief has where they hide something that they steal there are satanic warehouses there are demonic banks there are covens in darkness where the things that are stolen from your life are hidden you have to believe it that's why i said in isaiah 45 verse 2 i will go before you and make the crooked way straight i will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut and saw that the bars of iron verse 3 i will give you treasures of darkness and hidden riches why is he hidden if it was not stolen hidden riches in secret places god said even the things that were stolen from you some of you felt okay it's gone let's just wait for god to bring another blessing but i came to prophesy that between now and the next 30 days everything that was stolen is being restored in sevenfold you will recover all that was stolen from your life and god is restoring the years the months the weeks the days the hours the minutes the seconds in the name of jesus christ no you didn't shout amen like you believe i said god is re is causing you to recover and to be restored of all that you have stolen from you of all that was stolen from you in the name of jesus christ don't give up don't give up it will be a miracle for what was stolen physically to be restored but i came to prophesy to you again whatever the devil took from you even what you think is is trivial even what you think is not serious enough god ensures god wants to ensure that in 2022 you are complete you are wholesome you know why listen to me 22 is a prophetic number 22 is the number for i am is the number for yahweh is the number for god he said i'm the first and the last god revealed himself to the hebrew people and in hebrew there are 22 letters in their alphabet same in the greek aleph and tav alpha omega he say i am the beginning and the end that means the first is god's number he's always in the first and the last is his number in between the devil may have robbed you ravished you this, this, this stolen from you but in this year you must be complete so i prophesy by the anointing of the holy ghost everything that was taken from you by whosoever i declare you are recovering them all and the lord will cause you to be restored the lord is causing restoration in your life the years that was stolen is being restored in the name of jesus get ready for a shift are you hearing me get ready for a quantum leap i just heard that in my spirit the bible says in habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19 it says the lord god the lord god will set my he will make my feet like the feet of a deer and set me on my high places the, a deer is a fast animal it's so fast that means speed the lord god will give me speed but not only speed if god gives you speed you may still not catch up with those that have gone ahead of you god needs to elevate you because when you are elevated you begin to fly you no longer run he said they shall they shall mount up with wings as eagles then when you have overtaken them that's when you start running they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint 
I prophesy God is giving you speed and elevation speed and elevation whatever that the enemy has used to hold you down wherever the enemy has kept you I prophesy the hand of God that came upon Elijah is coming upon you now it's coming upon you now get ready for a shift get ready for divine acceleration God said to tell somebody it is not over until it is over it is not over until I say it is over therefore get ready for your season of elevation he's shifting you from glory to glory he's taking you from grace to glory the Bible says the just shall live by faith I declare you are moving to a next level of faith faith to move impossible mountains faith that creates a path in the midst of the sea receive it in the name of Jesus come on clap your hands shout jump give the Lord a massive 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 gyration of praise Hallelujah. How many of you believe that word tonight? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Recovery and restoration. It may just be for one person. Hold it. Recovery. What was stolen from you is coming back. Every dime, every cobble, every cent. It says in the book of Job chapter 5, I believe verse 26 thereabout. It says, you shall return to your dwelling and find nothing amiss. Huh? Nothing amiss. God is not only concerned about your spirituality. He's concerned about everything that concerns you. Are you hearing me? Some of you will even recover anointings that you lost. Breakthroughs that has escaped you is coming back. It's coming back. I'm telling you. It's coming back. He said, For your shame, I will give you double. Receive double portion in this season. Receive double honor in this season. Receive double elevation in this season. Who am I talking to? Receive double promotion this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands and give the Lord praise. Do you know this song? It's 3 4. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. You
the depth of your heart, you are welcome in this place. 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 Have your way. Come on, one more time. One more time. Lift your hands to heaven. Declare. You Yeah. 
we declare that you reign forever and ever. You are great and greatly to be praised. All glory, honor, dominion, and power be unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Blessed be your great name. There's none beside you, none to be compared with you. You who inhabit the praise of your children, we exalt you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Could you take your seat in the presence of Lord? I welcome everyone once more to Numatech. Can you shake the hands of somebody beside you and just welcome them to the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. The name of the Lord be exalted and glorified. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. We thank the Lord for last two weeks, the miracle service and then the Youth Aflame Conference. Uh, can we just put our hands together and give the Lord praise for those two powerful meetings. How many of you partook in both meetings? Miracle service, youth of flame. How many of us were blessed? <laughs> you wish that youth of flame is every weekend, right? I can assure you of one thing. Even though we can't have it every weekend, you can take the experience with you every day. Amen. And the Lord be glorified. So welcome back to Neumatech. We'll continue from where we stopped. We started a series on the Holy Spirit titled The Fellowship of the Spirit. So we'll just continue from there today. And I hope to briefly wrap it up today so that we can just spend a little time to pray and worship the Lord next week we can come for something different I want to honor God for uh, a great brother and a dear friend of mine uh, more like an elder brother to me who is here with us uh, Reverend Williams Abdallah can we give him a big God bless you thank you sir please celebrate God for Reverend Will Hallelujah. I'm so honored to have you, sir. I was shocked when I saw you. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. And please take back um, love greetings from us to your wife and your son. Amen and amen. Reverend Will is a pastor with Wisdom Chapel, uh, Polo, and also the president of Fresh Fire Ministries. Can we celebrate God for that? Doing, doing an amazing work and we thank the Lord that he has placed you here for such a time as this. Amen. And um, I also want to recognize the pastor who is in our midst, Pastor Dalda. Um, I don't know wherever he is. God bless you, sir. We welcome you. And everybody is welcome. Amen. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you forever. When we started this series, we started it with the intention to explore the basics about fellowshipping or communion with the Holy Spirit. We agree that God has called us to a place of relationship with Him. 
and that relationship is made possible through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in us especially when we become born again the Bible says in Ephesians 1 and in verse 14 that we were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise so when the Holy Spirit comes at new birth he comes to live in us he is the representation of the Father God and the Son Jesus Christ in us he brings the presence of God in our lives he brings the presence the atmosphere and the operation of heaven into our lives so that the prayer that Jesus made can be fulfilled which is thy will be done in earth he says thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven so when the Holy Spirit is in your life all of God and all of heaven is present in you so you can interact with God because God is spirit we briefly looked at who the Holy Spirit is just so that every one of us can understand his person the Holy Spirit is a person he is not just a force he's not just wind or fire he is a person and being that he's a person you can interact and relate with him he possesses the characteristics and the qualities and the features that a person can possess we saw that he is the life of God we saw that he is the force and the power of creation the scripture tells us that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters when the whole earth was distorted and destroyed and then because of the presence of the Holy Spirit he supplied life the very life of God so that everything that was lost could be restored and the earth could be recreated again so he is the force and the life of creation the bible says god breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life in genesis 2 7 and man became a living soul in job 33 and in verse 5 he said the breath the spirit of god has made me the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Somebody say life. You only begin to talk about life in the context of the Holy Spirit. The life of an animal or the life of humans is in their blood. Every human being that is not born again only exists based on the breath that is in their nostrils. Once that breath ceases they are dead but when the Holy Spirit comes into a man he brings the very life of God to play the dynamic and powerful life that causes things to happen we saw that the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals the presence of the Father and the Son as I've said before Jesus said anyone that keeps my commandment is in that love me and he that loves me I will love him and my father and I will come and manifest ourselves in him what he meant there was that the Holy Spirit's presence will come in the life of a man because it's the Holy Spirit that reveals the father and the son somebody say Holy Spirit we saw that the Holy Spirit is the one who made the word the son of God It is the Holy Spirit living in Jesus that made him the Son of God. Like we saw in the book of Luke chapter 3 verses 21 and 22 when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus and God a voice came from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So what makes a man or an individual described or qualified to be described as the son of God is the presence of the Holy Spirit that's the reason why Jesus sometimes will address himself as the son of man all right and he was also the son of God the son of God speaks of his the divine life of God in him which is the Holy Spirit while the son of man was Jesus the container the body the vessel that's why he was called Jesus the Christ or Jesus Christ the word Christ in the Greek is Christos it means the anointed 
or the anointing all right so it's the holy spirit and if the holy spirit comes into your life it makes you a bona fide son of god romans 8 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are what the sons of god he said for we have not received the spirit of bondage to fear but the spirit of adoption by whom we cry abba father how many of you are born again now if you are born again put your right hand on your chest and say thank you father for giving me the holy spirit and therefore i am a son of god that means that everything that jesus was when he was on earth you have the potential of becoming if jesus could heal the sick you can heal the sick if jesus could cast out devils you can cast out devils if jesus could bring solution into the lives of people then stop running around looking for solutions because god has made you the solution do you hear what i'm telling you you know i have to say this because we are living in an age where christians are becoming lazy Oh, Papa this, Papa that, headache, Papa, leg pain, Papa, waist pain, Papa, this one, Papa, your gas, you on the gas and, and it just trickled or, you know, tripled a little, you know, you know that when the gas, that, that sound, hey, Papa, no, 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 I agree that God sends anointed men to his body, but you see, <laughs> signs and wonders were not meant for the children of god because the bible says we are signs and wonders i and the children that the lord are giving to me as are, are for signs a sign is a message a message to who not to believers to unbelievers that these ones carry the divine life of god which is the holy spirit so somewhere somehow you have to wake up from your slumber and when you are confronted with situations you have to respond from the heaven that is in you you have to respond from the holy spirit that is in you are you hearing what i'm telling you i can count how many times i've called my father in the lord this year for prayers it's not up to three but some of some of you it's like five times in a week but or five, <laughs> five times in a day now don't after this one now you know when there's a problem i say papa papa as the abdos we should not no 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 that's not what i'm saying we can keep doing that and being a blessing to you but there has to come a time where you grow up to the consciousness of who you are and what you carry that's why we keep repeating that i am confession every day he is the i am i am who he is therefore i am that amen if he's the prince of peace then that means we are children of peace after all the bible says blessed are the peacemakers not even peace givers peacemakers that means their presence in a place alone brings peace and the bible says they shall be called the children of god that means if you see people whose presence bring unusual quietness and stability regardless of the situation then know that you have seen the children of god for the kingdom of god romans 14 17 is not in meat or in drinking but in righteousness and in what peace there will be peace in your family in the name of jesus christ there will be peace in your workplaces in your offices in your business environment there will be peace you know why because you are a child of peace and therefore the peace of god that passeth all understanding rests in your heart and if it rests in your heart the bible says the abound out of the abundance of the heart the mouth will speak if it rests in your heart that means every word that comes out of your mouth must speak peace and i declare that every time you speak there will be peace in the name of jesus so we saw all of that about the holy spirit we saw that the holy spirit 
is the one who inspired the word of God. The Bible says all scripture is given in first second you know Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, the breath of God, the spirit of God. We saw that the Holy Spirit, when a man has the Holy Spirit, he has supernatural intelligence. For there is a spirit in man. There is a vital force. You remember the Amplified Translation we looked at? Job 32 verse 8. For there is a vital force in man. That's what the Amplified says. A spirit of intelligence. Is that true? Uh -uh. Okay, you are not there yet. A spirit of intelligence. Put your hand on your head. Put your right hand on your head. And declare, I have the spirit of intelligence. Therefore, I am intelligent. From today, my brain and my mind is open. And there will be nothing difficult that I cannot understand. Do you believe that? From today, no more reports that will be difficult for you. When they give you a report to write in your office, you begin to shake and speak in tongues out of fear. No, no. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15, But the spiritual man judges all things. The word judge there means to understand, to discern. Is somebody being awakened to who he is this, this evening? That's who you are. A spiritual man understands all things. Whether it is calculus, whether it is what? Integer. Somebody say algebra. I just know you and algebra, you have been enemies for long. Amen. When the Spirit of God is in the life of a man, he brings divine favor. The angel called Mary highly favored. Why? Because the Spirit of God had come upon her. When the Spirit of God is in the life of a man, he brings power. Micah 3 verse 8. It says, I am full of power and of the Spirit of God, or as by the Spirit of God. And you shall receive power. Acts 1 8. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Put your right hand on your tummy and say, I have power, which is from the Holy Ghost. That power is a potential for the impossible. It's a potential for miracles. My prayer and my goal. That's the reason why we are called sons of glory. My prayer and my goal is that one day every one of you will become like me. Yes. So everything you see me do by the Holy Spirit, you can do it. And you know the kind of miracles I'm aspiring for now? <laughs> hey. Are you hearing me? You will walk in the miraculous after today. In the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God in the life of a man brings grace. Not just unmerited favor like we know grace means. But also divine ability. Grace is divine ability. Grace is the economy of God in the kingdom. The economy of God's kingdom is what we call grace. Grace is more than just a New Testament dispensational doctrine. No. Grace is the economy of God's kingdom. Why? Because the Bible says we have received all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In Christ contains all that we receive in heaven. That's the economy of the kingdom. And in John chapter 1 verse 16, it says, Of his fullness have we received, what? Grace for grace. He said, with Moses came the law, but with, Jesus, with Christ came grace and truth. So grace is the economy. The economy is the supply of everything that there is in the kingdom of God. Now, the Spirit of God is the Spirit of grace, is the life of grace, is the energy of grace, is the one that supplies the reality. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When the Bible speaks of life, don't just look at it as, okay, breath that I need to leave. But look at it as energy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you here at all? 
When the Bible speaks of life, it speaks of energy. Somebody say energy. What is energy? The ability to do work. For thou will show me the path of life. The path of energy, power. All of the supply, all of the supply that you can enjoy in the kingdom has been routed through Christ by grace. That's why the Bible says, by grace you were saved through faith. So faith was the currency of transaction. So that we can transact in the economy of God's kingdom, which is grace. Domicile there was our salvation. And also will be our sanctification. Also will be our wisdom. Everything that we will enjoy is captured in grace. And when the Spirit of God comes into the life of a man, he brings the execution in. Of everything that is due you or everything that is your right to enjoy in the kingdom somebody say amen. amen so these are many more are what we can talk about the person of the Holy Spirit that grace is available when you pray that grace is available when you make supplication every time you obey God you step into grace divine ability that means the amount of divine ability that is at work in your life is commensurate to the amount of obedience you have registered to the Spirit of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. I told us three primary experiences that we can have with the Holy Spirit. We are talking fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. To fellowship means to commune, to interact. There are three primary experiences that you can have as the beginning of your fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is a person. You can interact with Him. You can communicate with Him. You can know Him as a person. You can discuss with Him. You can walk with Him. You can move with Him. There are, you, you, are, you, are, you are brought into practical experiences with Him. What are those three basic experiences? Number one, He abides in us. He abides in us and with us. That is the assurance of His presence. That is the first experience that a man will have when he receives the Holy Spirit. The assurance of the presence of God. He will always remind you that He is with you. And it can happen in any way. Sometimes a feeling on your body sometimes a feeling in the atmosphere around you sometimes a knowing inside of you he makes you conscious of the fact that his presence is with you and you know i believe that when you are short when you have the assurance that god's presence is with you you have confidence for anything is that true the psalmist says though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death yet i will fear no evil why for thou art with me The second experience is that he teaches us all things. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of intelligence. He is not just an intelligent spirit. Intelligence came from him. He understands and knows all things. He is called the spirit of truth. He teaches all things. Don't just seclude the Holy Spirit to just a few aspects of your life no allow him to interact with you in every aspect he can teach you even as a musician he can teach you he can teach you as an instrumentalist you hear what i'm telling you he can teach you as an artist that draws or as an artisan you have handwork and so people will say, why your own nine better pass is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, David said in Psalms 144, he said, the Lord teacheth my hands to fight. Now look at this. He didn't say, it teacheth my mind. You don't teach the hand. It's your mind you should teach, isn't it? But what the Holy Spirit does is that his own kind of teaching is practicalized. In other words, he doesn't take you through a series of logic. One plus one is two. You go to sleep one night and you wake up the next day and your hand can just do it. That's just it. Do you believe that? I wish I was talking to people here. So you are thinking of scoring the song. 
But you just go to sleep and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and breathes on your mind. And when you wake up, you can just play the song like that. You don't believe me. Try the Holy Spirit. Try Him. Bring Him to every aspect of your life. He can teach you, you know, auto mechanics, automobile engineering. He can teach you business. There was a man called Demos Shakaria, the founder of Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship. Demos Shakarian was, you know, his family relocated from Russia to the United States. Because, you know, the Christians then, they were, they were troubled by communism and all of that. And Demos Shakarian grew up, he was a farmer. He just had a few cows and a small farm. Listen to this story. That was all he had. But he wanted to do something for the kingdom of God. And he decided he was going to do business God's way. And so he said, according to his story, that when he goes to buy a cow, the thing about cow business then, you know, because he was into dairy products, you need to know which exact cow you can buy that is very productive in milk and has a longer lifespan and can also give birth to other cows there was a particular species and you couldn't determine them by just looking at them so those who are into diary business know that it was a 50 50 chance you can go and choose a fat cow and when you come back you just discover the cow doesn't have the ability to reproduce or to bring out milk so it was a 50 50 thing but Demos Shikarian didn't want to do 50-50 kind of business like every other person does. And so the story was that he said that when he went to the place where they sold the cow, when he stood there, it's either he would see something like a light shine upon one of the cows. Or he would just feel attracted to a cow. And sometimes the cow he is attracted to is the leanest among all of them. In fact, the owner will be telling him, try this one, try this other one. And he would take that cow and go back and discover it was productive. And from there he grew, not by business formula, not by going to a business school, not by going to where? Harvard Business School, getting an MBA. Huh? Mm -mm. Just by the Spirit of God. He grew that business and his business became the biggest diary business in the whole world. And through that business, he began to sponsor many major campaigns. Many revivals you saw in America's history was from him. And today, that is fellowship, full gospel businessmen fellowship is in over 160 countries in the whole world. Somebody say the Holy Spirit. Now you bring him into your business and watch, you know. So <laughs> Yesterday I was talking with a, a dear lady. Maybe she may be listening now from Lagos. And she told me, she said she had a problem. I said, what's the problem? She said she went into a business. And the business is not working at all. So she wants me to, I said, wait, 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 wait. Want me to do what? I asked her, I said, did you pray about that business before you started? There was silence. Then she said, no. She said, but I'm praying about it now. So that God, I said, no, you didn't, God, it was not from God in the beginning. So don't think you can start and then when the thing is collapsing, you now bring God inside. No, God is not an errand boy. God will only sustain what he begins. I am the beginning and... Amen. Because I knew what she wanted to do. I should prophesy. Prophesy. No. So I told her, I said, go back. Take some days and fast and pray. Go and ask the Holy Spirit whether he is the one that asks you to do it. Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart and need not on your own understanding. With all your heart, any part of your life that is calculative and think you don't need God in this, that just shows that you have not completely trusted God and God will not be involved. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will do what? Direct. Somebody say Amen. Number three, experience. He guides us into all truth. He guides us into all truth. Not only does he teach us all things, he guides us into all truth. The difference between this and number two is that the first one, 
sometimes maybe the holy spirit bringing you into systematic understanding you understand what i mean step by step precept by precept showing you this is what it is all about and this is what you can do but guiding into all truth means he brings you into the revelation of that which is before you so just in case you are confronted with something that is a mystery to humans he will guide you to unraveling the mystery of that thing for instance people die at the age of 45 in your family that's a mystery i hope you know anytime you pray against something and the more you pray the more it seems not to go it means you are confronted by a mystery stop praying and look for the holy spirit let him reveal the mystery that can counter that mystery because you are fighting a mystery when you look at a family where ladies don't get married on time that's a mystery it's not because they are not fine no that's a mystery there are many wealthy and handsome guys that have gotten married to women that are one fearfully made you understand what i mean how about this mystery all you and all your sisters you are god fearing you are righteous serving in church you are all virgins but none of you have married and two are over 30. meanwhile there is a wayward girl down the street whose wedding card just came out and guess who she's marrying the pastor's son that's a mystery are you hearing me many of us are confronted by mystery stop trying to use logic to fight mystery you need the one that understands all mystery and sometimes he will just tell you dance from 12 to 1 a.m and after that dance two months later a man walks into your life what's the relationship between dance it's not about the dance it's about the fact that this was a mysterious thing you were confronting the bible speaks of the mysteries of god that were hidden from all ages and appointed for our glory it's called the wisdom of god and it's the holy spirit that reveals it are we here may the wisdom of god come upon your life by the holy spirit and make your life a mystery a mystery both to men and to principalities and powers your finances will become a mystery from today they will think it's because of that shop they are selling that's why you have money no it's not because of the shop i've seen somebody who have sold akara and bought two buses boss brand new is he akara again no it's not akara there's something inside akara are you hearing me uh-huh how about these malams you see them sell cola not and sell all kinds of things on the road but go and shake them you can see 200,000 on them that's a mystery they are operating by another mystery are you hearing me no you need to we need to understand i'm not, i'm not taking away the way of logic but i'm just telling you we are living in the last days this is a time where the kingdoms of the realm of the spirit is manifesting their civilization most of the challenges will be confronted with are mysteries you had better begin to know how to relate with the holy spirit and he brings you into the wisdom that was appointed for your glory say hallelujah and then i told us two extremes to avoid when fellowshipping with the holy spirit in order for you to interact with the holy spirit two extremes that you should avoid the first one we mentioned was what grieve not the holy spirit isn't it and i told us the different ways by which we grieve the holy spirit number one by being comfortable with secret sins any man that is comfortable with sin especially secret sins sins of the heart grieves the holy spirit number two we said murmuring and complaining number three we said unbelief and doubt Number four, we said disregard and disrespect for authority. Amen. Today we want to look at the other extreme. But before we do that, I want us to write this down. More on the Holy Spirit. Let's talk some more on the Holy Spirit before 
we look at the other extreme that should be avoided when building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals the Father's love in us. Is the one who reveals the Father's love in us. Now, the reason why I didn't say to us is because the Father's love has been revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the revelation of the Father's love to us. For God so loved the world that he what? Talk to me now. You are alive here. That he what? He gave what? The Holy Spirit. Who did he give? So the Son, Jesus, is the Father's love revealed to us. He is the love of God personified. Okay? But the Holy Spirit is the Father's love revealed in us. He is the love of God experienced different things did you hear what i said jesus is the father's love revealed to us he is the love of god personified the holy spirit is the father's love revealed in us he is the father's love experienced somebody say experience the holy spirit is the one in the godhead that is concerned with the experientiality of salvation If you're with me, say amen. Is that too much grammar? I'm trying to be basic so we all understand. Anything called experience is just like those of you who are science students or medical students in the university. They can teach you this course, that course, chemistry, physics, this one, that one. But then there are there is a time when you have to go for the practical aspect. Is that not so? Do you do it in the class? You have to go to where? A lab. When you go to the lab, who do you see there? A lab attendant. The lab attendant is not an academic staff. He's a non-academic staff, but he's the one in charge of that place. You may be the one studying that course, but when you get to the lab, he's the one that will show you this is this, this is that, this is this, this is that. And you know some of them sometimes become wicked just to prove their relevance, yes or no? You play with them, they will hide your manual. <laughs> Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit is the lab attendant and the class teacher together. Are you hearing me? The Holy Spirit is the lab attendant and the class teacher. Jesus is the course. Oh, do you understand now? All right. He's the one who reveals Romans 5, verse 5 it says. But hope maketh not ashamed, for the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. How? By the Holy Spirit. It's shed abroad in our hearts by. That means it's the Holy Spirit's work. When the Holy Spirit comes into the life of a man, one of the initial things he will do is bring a revelation of that love of God that was personified in Christ Jesus. You cannot understand the love of God. Why God would sacrifice his only son for a human race that till today many of them have refused to believe in him. So God wants to bring you into partnership with him in the experience of that love so that you too can become his love expressed and he does that by revealing or releasing the holy spirit to you so when the holy spirit comes into the life of a man he brings the love of god to your heart now the love of god the bible says hearing is love made perfect first john 4 17 that we may approach the throne of judgment isn't it or the day of judgment or whatever with boldness for as he is so are we in this world he said for there is no fear in love but perfect love cast out fear let me explain that scripture to you when he says that we will be confident or bold in the day of judgment it means that when you sin as a child of god 
what the Holy Spirit will do is reveal the love of God in your heart. This is what the love of God will do. The love of God is that feeling inside of you that convicts you, convicts your conscience that you have done wrong, yet tells you that you are still accepted. That's why he's called the spirit of adoption. Adoption. Con to connect you. So, what the devil will do, if you don't understand this, is that he will translate that feeling of conviction to become guilt and condemnation. And so you start running away from God. You are afraid, isn't it? You are afraid of going to church. You are afraid of praying. Now you are living by wish. You are no longer, you are living, you, you, you don't know if, if you sleep now and no, you don't wake up again. You don't know where you will go to. The Bible says there is no fear in love, but perfect love, which is brought about by the Holy Spirit, cast out fear. So when you see a man bold, regardless of what he has done, it's because the Holy Spirit has brought a revelation of that love of God into his heart. To make him know that even if you, are, you sinned, you are not a sinner. You are still a child of God. There's a difference between the one that sins and a sinner. A sinner is an unbeliever. He's not, he's not connected to God in any way. Do you hear what I'm saying? And then you can boldly repent and ask him for forgiveness. That's the reason why anytime I offend God, the first, the first person I go to is God. I know you, you, you run away from God. You, you will not pray for two days. Then you now smuggle into midweek service. And then they start singing, You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Sing now. For you are good and your mercy is forever. When they start singing that because of the motion of praise and worship, because you are emotional, not spiritual. In the midst of the song, you now say, Oh God, God, have mercy on me, God, have mercy. That's an emotional Christian. That's why you now remember that God will have mercy on him. Because he thinks the mercy of God is tied to day, it's tied to event, it's tied to a place. No. The Bible says in 1 John 1 verse 7, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with the Father. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. Verse 9, it says, But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just. So the first person you run to when you sin is God. You hear me? You run like that and say, If anybody will kill me, you kill me first. Do you hear what I'm saying? Not just staying and allowing the voice of the devil with guilt he says see yourself sister no that's the way the devil will talk a whole md now you do this one you have lost your anointing no you have lost it it's gone you have lost it remember when Saul sinned you remember what happened Remember something. That's the devil talking through guilt. Then you, you are here. You say, hey, it's true. The anointing is no more here with me. And then, because he's dealing with your emotions, all of a sudden your body will begin to react to false images created by the voice of guilt in your emotion. But the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the word? Sit down, put your hands together for the Lord. Did I help somebody this night? So next time you misbehave, run to God. And while you are there settling it with God, if the devil starts speaking, tell him, shut up. It's none of your business. In fact, you can even add, when I finish with God, I'll come back for you. <laughs> Amen. 
He is the one who reveals the Father's love. That's the reason why a man without the Holy Spirit can never understand what true love is. A woman without the Holy Spirit can never understand true love. Now I'm talking in respect to relationship and marriage. What did that young man tell you? I love you, right? With this understanding, you have to go back and ask him, which love? Is it the love that the Holy Spirit has put in your heart? Because if he makes that statement without the Holy Spirit in him, it's not love, it's lost. Because his love will always be based on a because. He will love you because of this or that or this or that. But the love that the Holy Spirit reveals, the Bible says it covers a multitude of sin. He has not seen your ugly parts before. He has not seen your anger before. He has not seen that when you are angry, you can break a burglary proof. Will he remain there? Have you seen people like that? Why are you laughing? <laughs> There's some people whose anger, eh? <laughs> Wait, let him see that one first. Let him see you bending an eye, a burglary pro breaking plates out of anger. Then we'll know then ask him again, do you still love me? You see, you know, you know, especially as young people, we have we have excluded God out of our romance, out of our social life, and that's why everything is a mess. Heartbreak is becoming constant. I think people have had broken by the day. If me, I think we should count the statistics. The number of people had broken every day it will almost be like the number of people dying of malaria. Why would somebody love you and all of a sudden in three months he has changed? No, no. That's not the father's love. That's the love. The father's love is the love that can forgive. Jesus said to Peter, Peter said, how many times will I forgive the person that offends me, my brother? Seven times. Jesus says 70 times seven per day. 490 times. How many hours do you have in a day? Somebody say love. Is the Holy Spirit. So next time you mention the word love, think Holy Spirit. And I tell you the truth, when a husband and a wife has this understanding, their marriage will last every storm. You hear what I'm telling you? Because it's no longer about anything physical or sensual. It's a spiritual connection. I asked a lady one time, I said, what is the meaning of love? She said a feeling. I said, you got it wrong. Forget about what your dictionary tells you. In, in my own opinion, love is defined by just one word. G-O-D. Somebody say it. God. That's it. It's unexp and it's just the way you can't explain God. That's how you can explain that connection. So it's not just body. He say he loves you. You people are saying good though. But now he wants to color you to one corner. If he has you alone in one house, will he explore or not? Then we'll know which whether it's true love or not. You are not talking to okay, let me forget you. You guys, you are you are you are just pretending as if you don't know what I'm talking about. If you and me are in one corner and you are still okay, you are still fine. He's not looking for any ultimate search. Yeah, you can know whether it's love or not. Yeah? <laughs> Amen. That's why the Bible says anyone, anybody that bonds, he should go and marry. <laughs> Amen. So the Holy Spirit reveals the Father's love. And I tell you, remember I taught us last year or last two years, I taught us about transformation i said the cradle of transformation as a believer is knowledge 
the beginning of your transformation into becoming like Christ is with the knowledge of Christ that you have through the teaching of the scriptures. That's the beginning. But the summit of your transformation where we can look at you and say you are now in the image of Christ is love. So our growth is maturity in love. He said that you will be able to comprehend with all the saints, Ephesians 3, 16, I believe, what is the length, the breadth, the height, the width, and to know the love of God that passeth all knowledge. He said, then you will be filled with the fullness of God. Are you hearing me? How many of you want to experience that love? See, it's, a, it's, it's more than an experience. It's a revelation. I'm telling you, I'm telling you where I live from. I've been backstabbed many times. Gossiped many times. But the same people, I still forgive them and relate with them very well. It's a revelation. You are no longer human when you walk in that love. That's what makes you come into the fullness of God. That was the life that was, that was in the apostle. If that love became life in them, such that hot oil could not kill John the beloved. They threw him inside the ocean. He could not die. Everything they tried to do to break him could not kill him. You know why? Because the love of God had matured in him. That's why he says that we will approach the throne of judgment with boldness. For as he is, so are we. That means we would have been matured by the Holy Spirit into love to a point where who he is now is exactly the image we reflect. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verses 11 or 13 thereabout, it said they observed Paul, Peter and John that they were unlearned men but that they had been with Jesus. They walked in love. Can I tell you the secret to the, to the miraculous? The greatest secret to a life of signs and wonders is not fasting. No. It's not prayer. No. What else? Sowing of seed. Because I've already destroyed 50% of us now by saying that one. I'm not saying don't fast. Fast to press into God. As a young person, press into God now. Because when you are 50 and you want to do three days dry... Are you hearing me? So press into God now. But that does not know. All those things are just to bring you to a place where your flesh is subdued so that you can experience spirit to spirit interaction with the Holy Spirit. But the greatest secret to signs and wonders is love. Love. If you walk in love, your life will become the miraculous. Can I share a testimony with you? Years ago, when I used to stay around this place, come to go here, in the evenings then, I usually would come out in the evenings. When I come out like that, I would trek around the place, just praying, praying and just, normally just walk, walking and praying. And so I went somewhere, I went to a shop to charge my phone. And then I was conversing with a young lady. She used to be our member here. You know her. That, uh, that medicine shop there and that see Japari or so so while my phone was charging I was conversing with her and then in the conversation I discovered that she had one of her legs were long, was longer than the other and I told her how would you want Jesus to heal you that was not a miracle service she said eh, she believed that God will I said no it's not tomorrow not in the service I mean here sit on that bench she sat there I took the two legs and in the name of Jesus, the right one grew out to the left one and it became equal in her very eyes. I was not fasting and praying. I did that because I was walking in an atmosphere of love. You know you are full of the Holy Ghost when you carry love, when you are walking in love. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. What was the result? He went about doing good. Even the Pharisees that criticized him, he was healing them. He raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. And Jairus was a Pharisee. Even the night when they came to catch him, 
to arrest him. In the midst of that, somebody's ear was cut off. He took the ear and joined it back. Is that one fasting and prayer? Somebody say love. You really don't know God until you begin to walk in the revelation of love. Can we pray in one minute? Lord, bring me to that revelation. Just in one minute, pray. Bring me to that revelation of your love that is shared abroad in my heart by your spirit. Open my eyes to that reality. That is the love that will swallow the hate that is inside of you. Swallow the unforgiveness, the bitterness that is inside of you. That some of us, that people who have hurt you so bad, but you find it difficult to forgive them. You have been living in bitterness. You need a revelation of the love of Jesus. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul. Are you praying at all? Rejoice, take joy, my King. In the words you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound to your Please be seated. The body of Christ needs the revelation of God's love again, again. If we claim we have the Holy Spirit, let it show in our demonstration of love. Let John 3.16 come alive in, in us on a daily basis. All of this segregation, tribalism, denominationalism, all of that will end. There's no time. We are living in the last days. The church needs to be united as one force. It's time for the bride to arise. The one thing that will connect us is that love. And that's the proof that we have the Holy Spirit. If you agree, say Amen. More on the Holy Spirit. Number two. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of grace. Now I spoke about that at the beginning of the series, but I want to talk about it now. It's the Spirit of grace. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 I told you that this, that grace is the economy of the kingdom of God every nation is sustained by its economy yes or no the strength of the economy of that nation determines many things about that nation and I will pour on the house of David. The house of David is God, God's covenant people. Israel. Isn't it? So you should know he's referring to us. Isn't it? He said, I will pour upon the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and what? Supplication. Now I told you that grace is God's economy. And the Spirit of God is the one that brings the practical experience. Is the one that brings the participation of that divine economy. In other words, everything that we can receive from God in Christ Jesus is brought to us through the ministry and the person of the Holy Spirit. If He is the Spirit of grace, it means He is the one that releases the resources available in grace. For instance, salvation is a resource in God's economy. But it was made possible when the Spirit of God came into your life. The Bible says you were sealed when you believed. You were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Which is God's guarantee to the redemption of the purchase of His glory. Are we together here? So the Spirit of God is the one, everything that you now have in Christ is the one that brings it. He takes it from Christ and He brings it to you. Just in case what you need is physical. 
He is the one that will convert the spiritual reality of the same into a physical substance and bring it to you. He is the one that brings the goodness of God and reveals it to you. He is the one that brings the mercy of God and reveals it to you. Even the anointing which is a resource in grace is brought to you. How? By the Holy Spirit. The Bible calls him the spirit of grace. And look at in this scripture. It says he will pour upon them the spirit of grace and supplication. Supplication is a dimension of prayer. That means prayer is not supposed to be natural. That means prayer is supernatural. So if you have been struggling to pray using your strength as a man, that's the reason why you have been struggling. Because prayer is what? Supernatural. The Bible says it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profited nothing. So when you start to pray, it is expected that the Holy Spirit comes to energize you, to strengthen you. So you have started praying when you feel that inner energy of the Holy Spirit coming. When it comes upon you, you forget about time. When it comes upon you, prayer becomes sweet. When it comes upon you, you are no longer distracted. When you get to this zone, then you are being energized by the Spirit of grace. Remember, in Isaiah 11, the Bible talks about him as the spirit of might. For me to preach, listen. For me to preach now, I'm preaching not just because I have knowledge of scripture. Most of the scriptures you see me quoting, I know them. Perhaps I didn't even read them today. I didn't even read them yesterday. But when I stand, my job is to do the talking. What the Holy Ghost does as the spirit of grace. When you hear grace in the kingdom, you are talking about resources. You are talking about ability. You are talking about enablement. Are we together here? When I stand, as I'm talking, the spirit of grace comes and it breaks upon my mind. He rearranges the information on my mind. Maybe these scriptures, I read them one month ago. He will go and dig them out and bring them to the surface. We come for a meeting, we are praying. And before I came for the meeting, I didn't have any intention to prophesy. But as we are praying, the spirit of grace, he comes on me. And then he, show, he shines a light on somebody. When he comes on me, my eyes, these physical eyes are shut and then i begin to see supernaturally by another eye that you cannot see and then through that eye he shows me a light shining on this brother and i go to him i say come sir i've not seen anything and he comes and as he's coming i begin to hear details about him somebody say the spirit of grace that's how it works and as i'm talking to him he shows me another lady he say point to that one as I put, that's how he operates. That's why the Bible says we are ministers of the Spirit. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth what? Energy. Are you hearing me? I've been stressed during the week, so I should have lost my voice. But he has worked on my voice now to kick in it. I will f I stand here all this while. When we finish after the service, I'll stand here seeing people. And yet I still walk back. And in the night still have time to pray for hours. Is that natural? No. The spirit of grace. Lay your right hand on your head. Say, Holy Ghost. Quicken me. Quicken me. Swallow my insufficiencies. Swallow my inabilities. Swallow my weaknesses. And strengthen me. Turn it into prayer for one minute. Some of us have been depending too much on our natural ability. He said, even the youth shall be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. When you pray, learn to wait on him. When you, when you worship, learn to wait on him until he moves. When you preach and minister, learn to wait on him until he moves. Because the Spirit giveth life.
Hallelujah. Please be seated. Listen to me. You need that life every day. You need that energy every day. You need Him to power you. Sometimes when, they are there, when you are watching a program, maybe a sport program or something, they will write and say, powered by, isn't it? That means it was sponsored, the airtime that it has on television or on radio was sponsored by this company. Your life too, they, you need to come to a point where they can write, powered by the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost powers your finances, they've not paid all of you for two months, but your colleagues will be borrowing from you. Why? Because the barrel of meal will not fail, neither the cruise of oil run dry, till the day that God sends rain. Don't say it's not possible. You have been calculating too much. You see, anybody that tries to reduce the work of the Holy Spirit to logic and think it's not possible, it is a dead end because there are too many testimonies in different generations of the workings of the Holy Ghost. It's the spirit of grace. I wish we had time to talk more about it. But another time when he gives us the opportunity. Now finally before we pray. I told us there are two extremes to avoid. When building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. When communing with the Holy Spirit as a friend. There are two extremes you must avoid. You remember that David said cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. You live as a believer. You come to a point where you realize. That everything about you is sustained by the presence. And the life of the Holy Spirit. And there are things you must avoid. If you don't want to mute his workings in your life. Or if you don't want him to walk away from your life. Because God can walk away from the life of a man. Do you hear what I'm saying? Just the way salvation is not eternal. Now, let me, let me explain what I'm saying. When you are saved, it has eternal effect. But when you fall from grace, you can lose your salvation. That means once saved does not mean forever saved. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I don't have time, but you can go and read, read Hebrews chapter 10. It will explain everything to you. So even salvation cannot be assured to be eternal. That means you cannot just say I'm saved and then you just live anyhow. And later you can go back and touch the blood of Jesus like so. Huh? So if salvation is not, is not you, know, you know, if you are not assured of it eternally, even the Holy Spirit... Just the way he comes on a man, he can live. Just the way he comes amongst the people, he can live. The Bible says of Samson, he wished not that the Lord had left him. He had turned the move of the Spirit in his life to a monument. He said, I will go out at other times. He didn't know that it was the Holy Spirit that quickened him for him to go out and make exploit. He, had th he thought it was about him. He said, I. And he wished not. That the Holy Ghost may God's presence not leave anybody's life here. Two extremes. The first one we looked at was grieve not the Holy Spirit. The second one is in First Thessalonians 5, verse 19 to 20. To 20, rather. 19 to 20. And this is where we round up today. Can we read it on the screen at the count of three? One, two, three. Read it again louder. One, two, three. King James says, quench not the spirit. That's the extreme. Quench not. Write it there. Quench not. So you can either grieve the Holy Spirit or you can quench the Holy Spirit. Give us a message translation in NLT and in Amplified. I'll show you something now. Don't, he said, don't suppress. Is it possible? So it is possible that you can suppress. the. You, we call it chance. You can chance the Holy Ghost. 
He said, do not quench. No, NLT first. NLT. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Ah! So your life can become like a prison and the Holy Spirit cannot move. Because you are not flexible. Because you are not yielded, you are not permeable, you are not responsive to his move. So he becomes stifle in your life. With all due respect, some of us, you know what I'm talking about. Some of our parents, they speak in tongues once in a year. Yes or no? And it's in a revival, the annual revival. And it's on the last day. After that, they wait for the next revival the next year. Now imagine if you were the Holy Ghost and you were living in that person's life, even speaking in tongues. So the Holy Spirit in some people's life is like a prisoner. He's supposed to be Lord, but you are the Lord now. He is now the prisoner. There's one song those days they say, Where he leads, I follow. I don't know. But now it's you that is taking the lead and the Holy Spirit is following you. Amplified, please. He said, do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. To subdue means to bring under subjection. It means to liquidate or to stop the activities of an individual. You know, God, the spelling of God is G-O-D. The first two letters is G-O. That means he's a going God. The last two letters, if you read it from behind, is D-O. He's a doing God. That means God is a God of motion. And I taught you in Utah Flame, I showed you in Ephesians, that the Bible says we are now his body. So God's movement, God's motion, God's activity, God's action on the earth has been limited to our yieldedness to our flexibility or to our permissiveness for him now if you want to build a relationship with the holy spirit this is another extreme to avoid the bible says quench not give us verse 20 in new king james now let me show you because somebody's asking how do i quench the holy spirit He said, do not despise prophecies. So he's giving an example. In 19, he said, quench not the spirit. Then he gave an example. That in all the workings of the spirit of God in the life of a man. I hope you know prophecy is one of the manifestations of the spirit. The Bible calls him the spirit of prophecy. That means he's the life of pro So if you see somebody prophesying, not soothsaying prophesying it means he is walking by the holy spirit so he brought an example for us in the next verse he says do not despise prophecies that means when we downplay or when we despise or when we demean the move of the holy spirit we are quenching him we are quenching his presence now you know that there are some churches you go to they say don't speak in tongues Yes or no? And it's the church of Jesus Christ. Oh. But based on your understanding now, what are they doing? Quenching the Holy Spirit. Because if you can't speak in tongues, how will you heal? How will you walk miracles? Speaking in tongues is like the ignition key in a car. When you turn it on, you start the engine of that car. Then the car can go in motion. Every other gift and manifestation of the Holy Spirit is tied to speaking in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, I assure you, you will never see the healing power of God move through you. Believe me, I tell you. Speaking in tongues is the activity of the Holy Ghost that stirs up the other giftings and operations of the Spirit of God in a man. That means if you make speaking in tongues a lifestyle and you keep pressing into it, he will keep taking you to depths of operation. 
If you speak in tongues long enough, you will discover that you can interpret. If you go further, you discover you can prophesy. If you go further, you will begin to feel healing moving through your by your hands. If you go very well, you will discover that you can stand physically and when you look at people, you can sit in the spirit over them. So the longer you go in that operation, that's the reason why the Bible says when we speak in tongues, we are speaking by the spirit mysteries. The mysteries, they are secrets. You are unlocking in the realm of the spirit where all these other manifestations are. Then tell me that you come to a church and they say don't speak in tongues. Just stand and preach like this. Now let me tell you what I'll do if I go to that kind of church. I will still love them and preach to them because we are all brethren. We are one. We are still in the body of Christ. Amen. You know what I will do when I go to that kind of church? The speaking in tongues I will not do on stage. I will do it in the house long enough. You understand? Because I know when I stand there, you will not speak in tongues. Yes or no? It's a quench not. Three ways to avoid. Three things to avoid. So we will not quench the Holy Spirit and we'll pray tonight. Three things that you must avoid. Or rather, how do we quench the Holy Spirit? How do we quench the Holy Spirit? Number one, ignoring His presence, promptings, and quickenings. Ignoring His presence, promptings, and quickenings. Ignoring His presence, promptings, and quickenings. Promptings is spelled P-R-O-M-P-T-I-N-G. Quickenings. Ask your neighbor to spell it for you. Say amen. The word quick is a word that is used in King James translation of the Bible. And it means life. So to quicken means to give life. Now you quench the Holy Spirit when you ignore his presence. When we fail to acknowledge the Holy Spirit walking in our midst. You acknowledge him by worshipping him. Because he is God too. You acknowledge him by being conscious of his presence with you. Some of you, the only time you know the presence of God is with you, is in your devotion in the morning. After that devotion, you enter Napep and you forget. That's why you start fighting with that Napep for change. Because when you finish your devotion, you left the Holy Ghost there. Then you space out with the Napep man. Sometimes you go on break. During lunch break, in the afternoon, you leave the office and go out. And while you are sitting with friends, chit-chatting, you know, chit-chatting and all of that, you just feel some cold sensation on one part of your body. And you, I know you read biology very well, you say it's homostasis. No. That's the gentle touch of the Holy Spirit, reminding you that, oh boy, I'm here, so that you can acknowledge Him. Because when you ignore him for too long, you quench his presence. That's the reason why the last time you were in danger and you shouted Jesus, even you, you knew that nothing would work. Because the Jesus came with no life. You have quenched the Holy Spirit so much he has gone to sleep, like Jesus was sleeping in the boat. Amen. When we ignore his presence, his promptings. What are promptings? Promptings has to do with schedule and time. For instance, that the Holy Spirit will make you plan that so so time you will do so so thing. To prompt means to persuade somebody to do something. So the Holy Spirit will say, Pray by 3 a.m. That's a prompt now. Or for instance, you wake up to pray by 6 a.m. And he will prompt you and say, finish by 7.15 a.m. Meanwhile, your devotion is supposed to end 6.30. Now, it's not like you may hear a voice literally. 
but the prompting is like a schedule on your mind it's like you just know that i'm supposed to end this prayer by 7 15. meanwhile you normally end by 6 30. but then you ignore it and say ah what is about the time after all god they hear us then 6 30 you just wake up in jesus name amen and then you just continue you have you have ignored him you have ignored his promptings because unknown to you why he made you stretch an extra 45 minutes maybe because the prayer of that 45 minutes is enough to tackle a demonic situation going on in the realm of the spirit over you that will last for 45 minutes sometimes when you see the holy spirit conscious of timing in your prayer or your fellowship with him it may be that something is happening in real time in the realm of the spirit and it will take that duration of time to counter or to cause it to manifest if you are with me say amen so we ignore when we ignore his presence his promptings his quickenings sometimes you just feel like to pray that's quickening start praying but you're not pray. but when you feel like to eat you are straight to the kitchen but when you feel like to pray or speak in tongues ah, in this quiet place meanwhile your mother is in another state inside napep and there's an accident already planned and here you are the holy spirit quickens you to pray and you begin to it started from laughter you people were telling jokes and in your laughter tongues came out from your mouth and then you feel like going some more maybe at that time the holy spirit is doing something you see that's why when you understand promptings and quickenings you will know how to work with angels people think it's just easy to stand and say receive it in the name of jesus and it happens it's not like that it's not like that there are there are rules of engagement sometimes like i was going to preach somewhere god did not give me a message for that place it was yesterday when we finished from breakfast prayer as i came out from the hall there's a bank opposite the hall as i just looked at the bank in the spirit for just a flash of two seconds i just saw a scripture and immediately i saw that just just about one two seconds that was it i said oh that's the message i entered the car and i started meditating on it but some of you the holy spirit cannot talk to you like that you will ignore it your mind is full of cartoon full of wrestling full of but from today receive the grace to yield to his promptings to his quickenings number two how do we quench the holy spirit disobeying his commands and instructions disobeying his commands and instructions listen to this you only expect a new command or instruction when you have obeyed the last one you only expect a new command or instruction from the holy spirit when you have obeyed the last one it will just silently whisper in your heart that pastor that is preaching give him five thousand silently gently or you it will just feel like it flashed your mind you say ah that's the only five thousand i have how would i go to work tomorrow the next time he will come he will come very faint fainter than the last one that's the reason why the strength of your hearing the voice of god is directly proportional to your obedience So we come for miracle service and usually god will not even tell me what he wants to do we'll just come like that so i know the drill when god doesn't speak no problem at least i know one or two scriptures i'm a preacher so i'll come and just waste time and just preach receive it amen and you are enjoying the word of god you know what i'm doing i'm just waiting for him I'm just waiting on him I'm just waiting on him and then all of a sudden he will just say healing very faint healing and then I know okay it's time for the miracle session and then I say everybody rise up and let's begin to worship 
Why we are worshiping you? You are singing so you are hearing my secret, ba? <laughs> Why we are worshiping you? You are singing song. Lord, we bow and worship. And then he will just touch me here. There's somebody with pain here. There's somebody with pain here. Once he says it twice, that's it. And then I pick it. I say there's somebody with a pain here. Sometimes we are <laughs> sometimes I want to minister, and all of a sudden, in my spiritual ear, I, he will just shout like a person. And I know that means there has to be a shout for the anointing to move. And I will be foolish enough to say, Okay, before I minister, there's going to be two shouts. And all of you are looking at me and say, Okay, Apostle, let's see how it will happen. And then it happens, and that's how it is. How about the prophetic? I can be discussing with somebody. And as we are talking, cracking jokes, I'm just asking him, Holy Ghost, Hafa. Holy Ghost, Hafa. As we are talking, he can use anything from the man. He can use anything and begin to communicate things to me. Sometimes he can say, go around the man. Just walk around in a cycle. And then I walk around. And I say, Holy Ghost, what's a cycle? Then he asks me, when a man goes through a circular motion is he making progress i say no he said there's stagnation in that man's life that's where the prophecy starts and details upon details i'm teaching you so that you can do it i'm not hiding it from you again it's easy as that but if i was if i was foolish to say ah, how would the holy spirit say that maybe that's my thought please be seated god bless you sir i think we can stop here abby you have heard too much. <laughs> Somebody say Holy Ghost. There's one more thing. I will share it next week. Quench not the Holy Spirit. I will share it next week but in another teaching. I want to explain something to you. But I want us to stop here so we can pray. So we must learn to acknowledge His presence. And we must learn to obey his commands. He can tell you to do anything. I can go to pray for one hour. And after the prayer, all he will say is, Give that lady money. Give that lady money. That's all. He's not saying it again. After two times, that's it. Once has he spoken, that's it. When I don't do that, it becomes difficult to hear God again that's why sometimes somebody has asked me is it that there are some people that god just likes that's why prophecy is coming to them no it's not that there are some people god just likes there are many factors one of the factors may be that those are the people that are more obedient to his instructions for instance when i say pray some of you will be walking around you are not praying but those that were foolish to obey the instruction, not as a man of God, but as from the Spirit of God, they are praying. The Holy Ghost begins to talk about them. Many people have evaded their promotion because they disobeyed one instruction. Sometimes it's a foolish instruction. Dance by 12 midnight. You say, ah, me, man, how will I dance? Or you go for Thanksgiving service. And while people are dancing, the Holy Spirit will say, go out and dance. You say, ah, me like this. And that's the dance that will roll away stagnation and, and retrogression from your life. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, tell them to shout for seven seconds. And in seven seconds, they will mountains that have befallen your family for seven years will collapse what is it to obey in seven seconds that you cannot acts chapter 5 verse 32 it says we our we ourselves are witnesses and so is the holy spirit whom god gives to those that obey him how many of you will make up your mind to obey the holy spirit from today stand on your feet it's time for us to pray
reach to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, from today, learn to obey the Holy Spirit. Say it again to another neighbor. Neighbor, from today, learn to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Now ask the neighbor, where is the Holy Spirit? Let them reply you. Where is he? Where is he? Now, if you say he's inside of you, why are you threatened in the midst of situations? If the problem swallow you, I hope you know it's you and the Holy Ghost that have been swallowed. So why are you afraid? They just called you that they rush your father to hospital. Hey, apostle, apostle, apostle. Sometimes if the apostle was as afraid as you, how finished will be your finish, ba? Let me tell you something. I'm not a superman. Who, I'm like every one of you here. The only difference is that I know the Holy Spirit. And I know that he lives inside of me. And I'm confident. I am conscious of his presence. When you are conscious of his presence, the next time somebody hits your car on the road, you jump out with Koboko. You are not a military man, but you have Koboko on your dashboard. You now jump out. Remember the story of a man. You, you know him now. A lecturer from school. He was queuing up to take fuel. And then when it was almost his turn, that time there were taxis in Meduguri then. One taxi man just entered his front. And he almost hit the man. He just came out. He, he, he was prepared to give the man a nice sermon. As he came out from the car, the Holy Spirit just whispered the scripture. And the servant of God must not quarrel. As he came out, the Holy Spirit just whispered it. That's how he just went back and closed the door. But some of you, you know, go agree. Oh. Some of you say, "No, I go, I go kill you today." <laughs> then later, you now come back and remember. Ah, he said something. Tell me, say. Maybe when you go and call her, you now discover the man is a military man, and then they bundle you. You now say, "But something been tell me, say." That something is someone. How about when you are applying for a job? Do you know that you can so walk with him that even when job offers come to your table, the Holy Spirit will say, don't waste your time. This one is not your own. Forget it. Your mates will be scrambling at applying. And they are laughing at you. And after everything, I remember those days when we were in school. Sometimes, you know, there was a time they gave us an assignment to do. And I didn't do the assignment. So when I came to school that morning, I saw some of my mates doing the assignment. Doing it. I said, me, I know I didn't do assignment. But there was this peace in my heart. Because they said, the teacher will come today and we must submit. How many marks? So, so, so marks. There was this peace. So I left them to do all the struggle. And I just stayed somewhere. And we waited and waited and the teacher didn't come. Then I went back home and did the assignment well. I came and saw, that's the day the teacher now came. Somebody say, Holy Spirit. You want him to reveal himself to you? Now in the next two minutes, I want you to close your eyes, lift your hands and talk to him. Lord, I want a relationship with you. I want to know what it means like to commune with you. To fellowship with you. I'm tired of ignoring you. I'm sorry for ignoring your presence in my life. I've made too many mistakes. Yes, I know I'm smart. But even with my smartness, I've made many mistakes. And I don't want to gamble with my life again. Holy Spirit, you're my helper. I'll always depend on you. Sing for me. And I. Make 
sure you talk to him. Make sure you talk to him. Reveal yourself to me again. You're my helper. He has been sent to help us. He has been sent so that we can depend on him. I need you, Lord. of your life every aspect of your life that you know has been secluded from him from his operation from his presence trust in the Lord your God with all your heart and lean not on your understanding in all your ways acknowledging 
surrender your business, surrender your marriage, surrender your academics. Many of us struggle because he's not in charge. We've ignored him too much. We have quenched his activity. We have quenched his ministry in our life. But tonight somebody is crying out and say, Lord, you came to help me. You are my helper. So I surrender my life to you. I pledge no longer to ignore you. No longer to despise your move, your workings in my life. Surrender your ministry. Surrender your church. Surrender your business. Surrender your career. It is not of him that willeth, nor him that runneth. It is of God that showeth mercy. He's here to show you mercy. He said, let not a wise man glory in his wisdom, nor a rich man in his riches, nor a strong man in his strength. But let him that glory, glory in these, that he knows and understand him. Come and open your mouth and surrender to him. Say, Lord, you have my business. You have my life. Some of you need to surrender your prayer life. You struggle in prayer. Why don't you surrender to his strength? Why don't you surrender to his power? He has come to help you. He was sent to help the saints. I need. Father, we give you glory tonight. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for teaching us, rebuking us unquenching the spirit that you have given to us oh lord in many ways we are sorry tonight areas in our life that we have secluded you from that we have ostracized your activities from we return in repentance and we surrender them to you you are the powerful one you are the mighty one you are the strength when we are weak. So today, stretch forth your right hand and help us. Take hold of our hands and lift us up. Reveal your power. Reveal your love. Reveal your presence. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Now just lift your hands. I want to make the altar call quickly. I'm going to do two things at a time and then we are done. If you are here and you don't know the Lord Jesus, you're not born again and you want to make him Lord over your life. Or perhaps you were a Christian, you used to be born again. But because of the situations of life or the wrong friends around you, you have derailed. There are things in your life that you do. That you know God is not pleased with and you want to rededicate your life to him. You want to surrender again. I'd like you wherever you are to walk to the front quickly. And so we can pray. Meanwhile, I would like those of us in the congregation to lift our hands. If you are saying yes to Jesus, please walk to the front quickly. Or if you are rededicating your life afresh, please walk to the front quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are saying yes to him as Lord and Savior. Please lift your hands, everybody. Eyes closed. Just bring the strings up for me. The Lord is touching me now, and I think I understand what it means. There are a few people here that the hand of God will come upon very quickly. The strength of God will come upon them, and that will be the energy released 
for them to begin to function on another level as a sign that the help of the Holy Spirit has been supplied just lift your hands wherever you are the Lord will touch some people now I can feel it because he's touching me now the same touch he, he was doing with me while I was seated he's touching now father I ask that your hand will move across this hall from the left to the right from the front to the back touch anyone that is here tonight introduce yourself to them in another dimension let the strength of your spirit the power of your spirit rest upon them now it's coming now it's coming stronger it's coming stronger i see at least two ladies i also see two young men it's coming stronger it's resting on the on men resting on people now touch them mightily there will be at least seven of them seven of them and there are three people that are see the fire of god coming upon their prayer life there are three people i see the fire of god coming on them mightily the spirit of prayer is resting upon you now from today you begin to pray on another level by the strength of the holy spirit and there will be a sign you will hear them speaking in new tongues holy ghost activate it now all over this hall activate it now stretch forth your right hand and touch them touch them mightily touch them mightily touch them mightily God is still touching people. Just be still where you are. God is still touching people. I wanted to just lead them through the sinner's prayer, but he, he has been touching me right from when we started singing. There are four people I see the spirit of wisdom coming upon mightily. The spirit of wisdom. Four people. Four people. Where are they? At the count of four. Holy Spirit, touch them now mightily. There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty give it understand. One in one, two, three, four, touch, touch the spirit of wisdom, understanding like never before. Understanding. Just help them. Understanding. The spirit of wisdom. That's it. That's it. That's it. Please help this lady at the front. Just so. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. It's touching people. He said they shall speak with new tongues. It's touching people. It's touching people. It's touching people. Everywhere. 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 Okay. Now I see the spirit of prophecy falling on at least 14 people. At least 14 people. At least 14 people. At the count of three, receive it. I see it like a cloth, like a garment coming from the heavens. My eyes are open in the spirit and I see the heavens open. And I see it like a garment coming on at least 14 people. At the count of three, let it rest on them. The spirit of prophecy for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. One, two, three, touch. Let it rest, let it rest, let it rest. Please just be your neighbor's keeper. If the ushers cannot get to you, let it let just be your neighbor's keeper. Old mantles, old anointings are being restored. Walkings of God that used to be in your life before now, and it has ceased. It's been restored now. It's been restored now. I want you to shout Amen two times and it will be restored. 
Number two, shout amen. Restore, 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 restore. Every old mantle, old anointing, workings of the spirit that used to be in your life and has ceased, I command a restoration now. Thank you, Father. Those of you in front, please just repeat after me while you are on your knees. Put your right hand on your chest. Whether you are rededicating your life or you, you are, you, it's your first time to be born again, you are about to receive the life of Christ in you by the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. I believe that you died and rose again for my salvation. Therefore, I receive eternal life. Fill me with your spirit. Wait, what? Something, something will happen now. Something will happen. Say after me, fill me with your spirit. Say it again, fill me with your spirit. For the last time, say it again, fill me with your spirit. Help that lady, help her. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray, Lord, that your spirit will come upon them as the seal of promise, as the seal of their salvation. Let the revelation of eternal life come upon them now. And from today, their victory over sin and death is activated. In Jesus' mighty name.